Yeah, all right, I'm back. I debated over whether I wanted to do this video, actually. Um, after my recent article discussing Shin Godzilla and my feelings on it, there were some people who wondered why I didn't do a video on it. Now, the reason for that was that even though it did have a limited release, thanks to some issues out of my control, I had to cancel my viewing of it. And I had plans to go view it. I had to go out of town to do it, but it was going to be worth it to see it in the big screen. So that stopped me from being able to do a video on it when it was initially released here in the States. Uh, but I was re recently able to see it. And that allowed me to do the video, uh, the article. Uh, that's what, that allowed me to do the article and share my thoughts and whether I thought the movie actually lived up to the hype. Because, make no mistake, Shin Godzilla had a ton of hype. Hell, it still has a ton of hype. Um, although I've noticed that uh, the hype is dying down just a bit. I've seen some other people express some less than happy feelings with the film. And that's fine. That's all fine. You can love the movie. You can hate the movie. It's fine. The job of a critic is not to tell you what to think. The job of a critic is to share our own personal experiences with a film and let you know our opinions regarding it. That's it. That's it. Whether you watch and enjoy a film is up to you. It's between you and the filmmaker. It's your personal experience. I can't force you to hate a movie. I can't force anybody to hate a movie. Lord knows if I could, I would eat, I would be so happy to put Michael Bay completely out of business. The man is a piece of shit. He really is. Horrible person. He's sexist. He fucking just gives shit to fans. And I don't like him. He's a just awful, awful. Dinesh D'Souza, uh, Eli Roth, I don't have a huge thing against, but he's not a good... Uh, I'm not going to say he's not a good filmmaker. He's got good cinematography down. He just can't write. I would like to see Eli Roth direct something that he didn't write, that he had no direct hand in the creation of then maybe we could see whether or not he has any ability to do something that does not feel like a Eli Roth disaster. Because that's how I feel about all of his films. But that's neither here nor there. I was asked several times about doing a video, so I decided, hey, why not? Let's do a video. Let's talk about it. So, because I'm, I'm not going to review it written. The, the article I wrote about Shin Godzilla is the closest I'm going to get to a written review of this movie. For the foreseeable future, I have no intentions of doing a written review. That was your written review. Much like Batman vs. Superman, this is it. So, here you go. I'll give you the video to go with it. Bam. Here we go. Shin Godzilla. <laughs> Alright, so to understand Shin Godzilla is to understand Neon Genesis Evangelion, which is a very strange anime from Japan, as opposed to the anime that grow on trees in Delaware. <laughs> All anime are from Japan. 
All right. If it's called anime, it's from Japan. If it's not in from Japan, then it's not anime. It's something else. It's animation from another country. Anime literally means Japanese animation. So, all right. <laughs> you have this very strange anime that involves giant monsters and giant robots and 12 year olds piloting said giant robots. At least I think they're 12. It's been a while. But I remember the general basics. I just don't remember all the ages. And there's lots of weird shit and lots of sketchy shit in parts of it. Yeah. Like there's literally a scene of one of the characters jerking off and over another character. So, yeah. It's a little weird. It's a little... Uh, it had like three endings. And that's not even counting what we have. Like, there's a, there's like a new movie series, which I've not watched any of. Felix was asking me about it because he's never watched any of it a while back. So I told him it's probably just best not to even get into that right now. Like, he was asking, I think it was like the second or third movie. He's like, do I need to know anything? I'm like, oh, you don't even know. No. Don't just jump into the deep. No, you gotta start. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna sit through this, you gotta start from the beginning, or you're just done. All right, you're gonna be so confused, your head's gonna explode, and your ass is gonna fly through your mouth while you're screaming. It's insane. <laughs> Anyways, this guy is one of the creative forces behind Shin Godzilla. Which explains a lot, because Shin Godzilla is a very, very weird movie. Yeah. Let's, let's be honest, it really is. Whether you love it or hate it, it's a very weird movie, alright? I... There's no getting around it. It's... It's just so fucking weird. I never expected to see something as weird as it, but there it is. It's just there. And I don't... I don't really know how to approach it for a proper review because it's so fucking weird. And yeah, I could do commentary on... about, like, the design of your... monster. Designs of your monster because he has forms. I could talk about the the freaking social commentary about the government, but I already did all that in my article about whether the movie really lives up to the hype. And even then, <laughs> what else can I say? I. <sighs> I'm dumbfounded by this movie. I really am. Like, I didn't hate the movie. Not at all. I'm just... I didn't find it pleasant. I don't even know if I'd want to see it again, but... It left an impact. Like, there's really... There's really no other giant monster film, no kaiju film, quite like it, but, and I think I've said this before, the biggest problem is when you have such a very, very bizarre and different story as this, and you tack the name Godzilla on it, in any way, shape, or form, there's an expectation that it's going to feel like a Godzilla movie. And I'm sorry, this didn't feel like a Godzilla movie. It just does not. Like, yeah, I know, on a superficial level, people will always say, oh, a Godzilla movie, it's about him destroying Tokyo. No, that is not what a Godzilla movie is. If you look at it at surface level, technically you could say that. But you know what else you could say? You could say that Power Rangers is about a group of stupid teenagers destroying their town. That's a stupid way to approach the plot of something. That is vague, it is misleading, 
and it's surface level. You're not getting anything that's actually there. Godzilla is more. Godzilla has always been more. From the very first film to this, it's always more, all right? And sure, yeah, there's destruction of the city, but, and here's the thing, I feel like the movie is so ingrained in showing our creature, or creatures, it's really one creature that just constantly evolves, it's so ingrained in showing it as monstrous, and showing the government as inept, that that's it. That's it. There's, like, it doesn't feel all that deep, honestly. I've seen this before. I've seen this kind of thing before. Hell, Godzilla 1998, you know, the Roland Emmerich fucking disaster piece? Yeah, that? That had this. It had an evolving monster. It had an inept government. And you know what else? It didn't live up to the hype either for me. I remember getting excited for that. I do. I was young. 1998. I was what? I was a teenager, but I was still hype. Man, fuck. And make make no mistake. All right, I'm not I'm not bitching or anything. I am giving my assessment. All right. I feel that Shin Godzilla, honestly, is a very confusing and kind of just off-putting kaiju film, and it really doesn't fit into the Godzilla mythos or just anything that Toho has made for the Godzilla brand, so it just leaves me feeling like, what did I watch? Like, I'm all for different ideas. I'm all for experimentation and trying new things. But this is too different. Like, this may as well not be called Godzilla at all. This may as well be called something else. You could have called this movie Yangri or Shin Yangri. It has about as much in common. All they were trying to do was tell some kind of story about a giant monster as an allegory for the disasters that happened there in Japan. Like, three disasters back to back. And the government's ineptitude at handling those disasters. And it succeeds in that way. But it doesn't feel like a Godzilla film. And that's what bothers me. That's what bothers other people. It doesn't ring Godzilla. And you know what? I've heard so many people, so many people, hold on, I, I'm, I'm going to pull this out for a second. So many people. So many people have bitched about this movie. They bitched about the 2014 Godzilla. And it's no secret, I actually really love this movie. I really do. I've been a Godzilla fan my entire life. My entire life. This is one of my favorite Godzilla films. I was raised on Toho films. I have seen them all. And... Oh, people will crucify this film. They will crucify it and talk about what a piece of shit it is. They'll say it doesn't look that great. And then they'll sing praises of this film that is very confusing. Just deeply confusing. Whereas the 2014 film fits easily into the mythos. It feels like Godzilla. It has... I'm sorry, I, I don't... I don't like all the bitching about the human characters. The human characters in this movie were not irritating. They weren't. All right, I'm sorry. I don't care if you don't like a Aaron Taylor Johnson and you just wanted more of Mr. Breaking Bad himself there, Brian Cranston. I know he's a great actor, and I was bummed too, but Aaron Taylor Johnson did not do a bad job. 
Hell, he barely talked through most of his performance in the movie. Most of his most of his performance was just straight up, just him do, doing mood and facial features, and it worked. It worked. He seemed worried. He seemed like he was struggling, trying to get home to his wife, his kid, and he's dealing with a nightmare situation. He's having to deal with his father just dying. There's a lot of things he's dealing with. And his story mirrors Godzilla's story in the movie, and that's one of the reasons why I love this movie so much. Because you have this human character, and you have your giant monster hero, both the heroes of the film, and their stories mirror each other so perfectly. And they feel so just right there with each other. Just perfect. Perfect. You feel the pain. You feel their struggle. At the end, when they both collapse, it is so poetic. It works so well. Gareth Edwards did a great job in this film. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You don't like my opinion? I don't fucking care, all right? I love this movie, and I didn't really like Shin Godzilla all that much. I really didn't, because it didn't feel like a Godzilla movie. I, I hold this movie, and I hold this movie next to each other, and guess what? These feel like they belong together. They feel like they belong together. I hold Shin Godzilla next to either of these films, and it's the odd man out. It doesn't work, all right? It just doesn't. I know it just seems like... Ah, I gotta put this back on the fucking shelf. Hold on. Technical difficulties. I know it seems like I'm just hating them the Shin Godzilla film. I'm not. I really not. Like I said, I don't dislike the film. I really don't. It can be an entertaining movie. Genuinely so. Hell, I wouldn't mind seeing a really ridiculous Ameri <gasps> uh, ooh, American dub of it. Maybe it could be fun. More fun to watch if it had like some silly American dub. Who knows? Let's see what happens. Maybe, you know, because I, I know they're probably going to dub it. They dub all these movies. It's, it's going to get dubbed. All right. It's, well, maybe they'll have a little fun with it. Maybe I'll enjoy it more when it's dubbed. But watching the original subtitled version, taking it at face value, looking at it for what it was, it wasn't that deep. It didn't really wow me in any way. And it didn't feel like Godzilla. It's That's all I can say. It's all I got. It's really all I got. Uh... Yeah. You got two things so far this month that are kaiju related, and they're both about the exact same movie. I hope you're happy. Maybe now I can actually talk about another God, not Godzilla, another kaiju movie. Hopefully, tomorrow I can get one of these articles finished, the internet will cooperate, and we'll get this shit done. Yeah, I'm still fighting the internet. God knows. Hopefully, I don't have any problems uploading these videos either, because it's been storming all day. But, yeah, if you're watching this and it's still today, then yeah, well, okay. And it's still fucking the 19th, and you know I got it uploaded in time. But regardless, yeah, that's my opinion on Shin Godzilla. That's my sort of review. Take two on it. It's... That's all I can say. Like, I mean, I didn't think any of the actors were bad. I, I'm gonna be blunt. I hated the design of Shin Godzilla too. Just, he looks goofy. All right, I think he said that in the written article. He just looks goofy. Even the baby, the baby one, the full grown one. Looks goofy. It just looks goofy. It doesn't doesn't look imposing. It's not scary. It's goofy looking. Yeah, you can angle it and it looks a little scarier. But you know what? You fucking angle anything and it looks scary. Look, look, you can angle me. Alright, that didn't look scary in the way that I'm thinking, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm out. Bye.